Hello everyone, Slow Motion Atomic Bomb back again, yes, gather round, it is time for Pitfall, it's Pitfall for the Atari 2600. It's a platform game and I do like me a platform game, and it's a platform game from before I was born. Imagine such a time ever existed, the year before I was born in fact, and um... So I first uh, played this game, hang on, let me traverse these, oh, God. for God's sake, traverse these crocodiles, are they crocodiles or alligators, bloody hell, bloody hell, that again, so this game, um, I actually first played this in the mid-90s on something called the TV Boy from Systema Systema System A one of those one of those would be the name and it was a plug and play with 120 something built-in games popped it in the back of your TV just like you would a, a Sega Mega Drive and it was, uh, I think it was Chinese, probably. And it was full of bootlegged <laughs> Atari 2600 games from Activision and Atari and Mattel and people like that. And it was all hacked. Um, there was like a Donkey Kong clone on it and there was a Frogger clone. And this was one of them. I really like this one. Pitfall. It wasn't called Pitfall. It was something like Forest Journey or Forest Walk. And it wasn't green. It was blue, which I think is something to do with it being PAL. Some sort of like NTSC to PAL conversion or some strange thing like that. And that's where I first played it and loved it, and it's uh, it's wonderful, it's great. What a, what a great game. Pitfall. It's Pitfall Harry, that's his name, isn't it? And um, I love that sound, the Tarzan yell. Fantastic. The thing with this game is it was um, it was very ahead of its time. I die. Uh, start again. I'm gonna go the other way. Might be it. Might be easier to go backwards, right? Isn't that what speedrunners do on this game? They go backwards, I think, because it's um, yeah, like there, right there. You're running with the barrels rather than against them. Does that help? Possibly. Does it feel like it helps? Possibly. I mean, it helped there, for sure. Ah, oh. One of the things that I maybe don't like about this game is that you've kind of got to learn... ...like each individual screen... ...over the flame, because some of the, like you saw there, some of the floors open up. And it's, uh... If you're not aware that it's going to do that, if you're not expecting it, can catch you off guard. I guess the clue is that it's like um, a screen where there aren't any obstacles. Possibly. It's more likely to be a screen where the hole in the floor is going to open up. I'm waiting for one to show up now so I can uh, test this theory, but <laughs> none are. Like, that has clearly got stuff in the way where, where it's not going to happen, right? Now he's got that ladder. And keep it keep ahead of this barrel. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Back up. Yeah, I don't think one's going <laughs> to show up, is it? But yes, this game... So I've done a little bit of amateur coding on a Pico 8. 
learned a little bit of coding. I've never made anything that was particularly good or playable, really. It's all a little bit beyond me. Um, but one of the things that I've learned from doing it is that you kind of... Um, Oh, there's a, there's a thing that's opening up. And there was a bag of cash. I think you have to collect all 20, don't you? Isn't that like the uh, gimmick before the 20 minute time limit runs out or something? But the, the coding that I've done has been the sort of um, thing where you learn, you put these pixels here and you put these sprites here and this is how you animate them and this is how you make something come alive in a sort of limited amount of frames a bit tentative of when to jump off there and it's how you kind of use less bloody hell should i go along the bottom jump over this scorpion oh no was that my last life no Oh, I'm going to die. Oh, there's something up there that I need. I'm going to die. I died. Never mind. Let's have another go. Let's have another go. So, yes, when you put the... Um, one of the things that doing the coding on the Pico 8 has taught me is that when you do the... Uh, I love that sound, but it's, it's putting me off every time I try and speak. You... You learn how to maximise the, the sort of small amount of design that you do. So for example, those trees are repeating themselves, right? And that's kind of how you do it in the Pico 8. And it's a way to use less RAM to make a game feel bigger. And obviously, something like this, I think it's on like a 4 megabyte cartridge? That's it. But the game is like so much bigger than most Atari 2600 games because the guy that made it was, you know, when I did the stuff on the Pico 8, I'm doing that with guides. I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm reading about how to do it. This guy basically came up with it, plotted out this game, I guess the levels and everything, and then figured out how to sort of min-max his assets. Like, how can I... Like, those trees are the same there on that screen, but they've they've been flipped. So they sort of to the naked eye while you're... Oh, I'm munched by a crocodile. Like, those two on the outside there are opposite, right? But it's just the same tree flipped. And this guy kind of figured out a way to do that. Um, that would use less memory. So instead of drawing two trees, it's just one tree. And um, he was basically able to figure out how to make such a, a sort of big game. And you'd think as well that what you had before this was you had... Uh, Pong, which is two rectangles in a square, and we claim that it's tennis. And you also had something like um, Pac-Man, which is some squares that have been put together to resemble like a banana or a moon sort of shape that's sort of a face. Careful there. And he's eating squares. Well, this is like one of the first times where you're like, this is a man running. They've sort of, you know, got enough squares to give it motion and give it life and everything. There we go. I picked up that uh, diamond. Does that mean anything? <laughs> I don't know. Was it an extra life? Was it? Was it just one of the trinkets I have to find? I'm not sure. But yeah, with like a very small amount of pixels, they gave life to that snake. They've, um, even though you're running along this straight line, the fact that you can sort of go downstairs, down these ladders, gives it a sense of depth, makes the whole thing bigger. And it's a game that is just, ah, 
mm. not too far forward. It's a game that's just fun, and it's still fun. And it, yes, it, it's it is just a few pixels and no game music and some noises that after a while maybe do start grating a little bit, but it is eminently playable and it's I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. But I'm I'm going for a PB, which I don't know. Can I can I make it to five minutes without losing all my lives? I don't want to get stung by this poisonous asp or fall into this pit of water. Obviously, I think the um, the famous bit of trivia about Pitfall is that the original commercial for Pitfall has got Jack Black in it, 13 years old. And I guess that's like his first... Um, oh, no! That's his first uh, piece of work. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to insert the clip of that right now. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. And this is Pitfall 2, The Lost Caverns. And... Uh, I don't intend to play this for very long, but I've decided it'd be worth having a go because I've never actually played it before and what the hell is going on? What a way to send me back to the start. But yes, this is the um, this is the sequel to Pitfall, Pitfall 2. And the biggest change so far, as you can probably tell, is the soundtrack. It's got music. Oh, this frog. The deadly, deadly death frog. Of deadly, deadly death. They're going to do this every time. Now, from what I know of this... Well, let me see if I can go... Oh, you can't go left because that boulder's in the way. From what I know of this, from what little I do know, you can't actually die. It's not like you've got the three lives that you had last time. In Pitfall 1? I don't know how popular this game is, because I, I never really hear much about it. I hear about Pitfall plenty, but not so much this. And I think it might be because it... Oops. Was I supposed to go that way? Should I go this way? It came out in 1983, which was... Oh, I've missed some gold on the top, but I've got some... Oh! I'm going to get this gold here. 5,000 points. And I guess, is that a checkpoint? Like a continue? There's a lot more gold than there was in Pitfall 1. Uh, which way left? Yeah, more gold. Yeah, there's... Um, this came out in 1983. It was after the fabled video game crash in North America. I think it was one of the last games that came out on the... Uh, oh! On the 2600. And a bit like Pitfall 1, what it does... Careful for that bat. Is... Ah! Thought I was going to sneak under that. It does... A lot more than you would expect a 2600 game to be capable of. Which again is a testament to the programmer. Was his name David Crane? Like the uh, sitcom writer? I don't think it's the same person. And one of the, like, the interesting bits of trivia, I guess, is that Sega actually... Um... Oh, shit. Sega actually made a version of this 
they licensed Pitfall 2 so they could make the uh, arcade game. And I guess it was prominent in Japan from what I've read, but not particularly popular in the US. Not one of the big hits. How do I get up here again? There. These ladders are a wee bit tricky. Oh, for God's sake. Keep getting hit by that. I need a crouch button. I think this would be vastly improved with a crouch button. Also, I don't seem to be able to actually go down these ladders properly. I'm not very good at it. Ah, and that just keeps happening. How utterly frustrating. Look, I can't... You just... You fall straight down and you don't get on those ladders. Oh. Is that what I'm supposed to do? No. Go closer there. So we have finally evaded that bat and all for this little bit of gold. So I guess it's about getting the high score as mo a lot more games used to be. Oh shit. Keep forgetting about that one. But I also I couldn't figure out how to get off the ladder. Right, like how do you... do you have to jump? No, you just fall. I don't... I don't get it. I mean, maybe that's what you're supposed to do. But, not, like, now I can't step it out. I'll say that I'm finding this game intriguing. But that I'm also... Like, th this, I'm just going to hit that again. I'm finding it frustrating. And I don't know if it's because the game is frustrating or if it's because I'm just crap at it. I suspect it's because I'm not very good. Right. So I need to do that again. Oh, wait, I could probably... Probably do that, couldn't I? But I, can I get off there, yeah? No, oh, waste of time. Right, we've sort of successfully navigated this. I want to keep going, right? So, do I go left there? Or do I come to another dead end? Well, I didn't really have time to work that out. And now I go all the way back up here. Well, if I can't get down this time, I might just call an end to it because this is already starting to wind me up. Oh, it's just doing it again. Yeah, I've had enough of it. It seems like it might be good if I was willing to put more time into it. Figure out what <laughs> what to actually do. Look, and there I go again. I can't help myself. No, this is my last go. I'm not doing any more. That's the end. And there I go. Doing a wee bit more. Although, to be fair... I am trying to wrap up this video. Um, oh, look, if I, if I can get on this ladder. Should I just go straight down? I mean, there is more gold there. With which to always believe in your soul. And I've made a mistake, and I've been hit. Sick of it. The end. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. If you're already subscribed, ding the bell. Get more notifications from me in the future about videos that are upcoming. And I shall see you again next time. Goodbye.